We're going to start today by taking questions. So do you guys have, or does anyone have questions from the previous assignments? Joe? From homework one? Or Wait, we had homework one and two due? No, I don't think two is due yet. I'm just double checking. Oh, okay, yeah, I believe just homework one. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start with, can we stop talking please? I'm going to start with a prime factorization, so that's 2 and 648, and that's 2 and 324, and that's 2 and 162, and that's 2 and 81, and 81 is 3 to the 4th. So I have, the way I'm going to write this then is, I'm going to have a 2 to the 3rd, so that's that part. I'm going to think about this 3 to the 4th as 3 times 3 to the 3rd. So I have another 3 to the 3rd from that part. And then I have 2 times 3 left over. Okay with that, Joe? Yeah, I just did that completely wrong, but I understand what you did. So I'm going to have, I can take out the 2 and the 3, and that leaves me with the 2 times 3 underneath. So 6. Is that, a, is that a 3 or a 5? Uh, yeah, I did that. I see what you did, but I was, uh, I did the, what's it called? Prime the, factorization. Prime factorization. I did it right, but I just didn't do the 3 to the third power. Then when I put it into the square root at the top, I also didn't use it to the third power, so my answer was different. But yeah, I so, so, so the trick is you're just trying to get bundles of 3, right? So, if it's a cube root, when I do my prime factorization, right, that's 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th. Exactly. But that doesn't really help me when I go to like try to break it down. I want those packets to be packets of three. Okay. So I want three twos together, two to the third. Anything left past that, I'm gonna leave as extras. Okay, so then um, only when there's a, like the subscript of the three, like the ninth power, is that when we're going to the third power uh, in our prime factorization? Or are we always going, are we always doing that? I don't know how to get, so, like, I don't know how to so, ask the question. I'm looking for packets of three because it's a cube root. Yeah, so if that's not there, are we still looking for packets of three? No. Okay, sounds good. No. Thank you. Uh, Hal. Um, can you just explain, like, right after that three to the fourth, like, Okay. So I just started packaging things together underneath my cube root as packets of three. So I have three twos here. That's my two to the third. Three to the fourth I could think of as three times three to the third. Okay. So there's another packet of three there. And then my leftover stuff, I have this two and this three. That's those ones. Okay. So those guys couldn't go into a packet of three of them, right? So then when I simplified, the powers of 3 can come out front, right? So I have three twos, that becomes one regular two out front. I have three threes, that becomes one regular three out front. Yeah, because really what we're, what I'm shortcutting around is saying, you know, like this is the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 27 times the cube root of... 2 times 3, and the 8 becomes the 2, and that. Okay. Right, I'm just shortcutting around that. Does that feel okay? Yeah, I can That's okay. That's exactly what you should do if you're not sure what happened or what I did, is to ask a little bit. We can fill in some more blanks if I skip some steps that you're like, I'm not sure what's going on. Megan? So, 
In the front? Yeah. So the 2 to the 3rd, I broke up. That's the cube root of 8. And the cube root of 8 is just 2. Cube root of 3 to the 3rd is the cube root of 27. That's just the 3. Well, those are the only ones that are perfect cubes. Right? 2 to the 3rd is by definition a perfect cube because it's something to the 3rd power. Is that okay? Or you don't seem very convinced? Did anybody notice that this could have also been done as 6 to the 4th? Probably not. I'm guessing most of us don't know our powers of 6 past 6 squared. And why would you, right? Well, you might have noticed that. And then you would have just ended up with. So since we have the 3 or the ninth power, that's like the 3. I don't The ninth power? The, what's it called? The, the, the little 3. You don't know that's an index. Index. So since our index is 3, mm -hmm. is that why we're bundling up? The other coefficients as three as well, so two to the three, three to the three. Yes. And then we have the leftover two and three. And that's why those are kind of by themselves. Yes. Makes sense. Hi. Okay. Thank you. You're Hi. welcome, Megan. It's for you. Okay. Should we do another? Yeah. Okay. Which one do you want to work on next? Uh, I'm happy to do more. Eight, sure. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing the prime factorization. That is three to the six times five. Who's impressed I could do that in my head? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, he's smart. Well, I know thirty-two is two to the fifth, so three twenty is ten times. 32, so it's 3 to the 5th times 2 times 5, so I'm sorry, that's not 3, that's 2 to the 6th times 5, excuse me. Could you say that one more time, please? Yeah, so the way I thought about it is 320 is 32 times 10. Yeah. Yep. 32 I know is 2 to the 5th, and 10 is 2 times 5. So that's the way I did it in my head that quickly. I don't expect you guys to be able to do that, but you asked, so I told you <laughs> what I did. Um, Megan, are you okay just with the prime factorization part? I haven't I haven't done anything to finish it. What did you get? Did you do the prime factorization? Did you do the prime factorization for that? Did you draw out the factor tree? Okay. So if you're not sure, like draw the factor tree. I think that really helps kind of keep everything organized, even though it takes a lot of space. And eventually, if you start getting good at it, you can take that step away. But until you feel confident doing the prime factorization, I would do the factor tree. And you know what I mean by the factor tree? Kind of what I've drawn down there. But obviously, like, you can stop when you find like a perfect square, a perfect cube, depending on what the problem is you're dealing with. Okay, does this feel okay here? Okay. So what I'll do then is I want to get this two to the sixth. I want to break those up into packets of three because I'm have a cube root. Is that okay? So I have six twos. So I could bundle them together into two bundles of three, right? So like if I break this up then, I have that. So 
So the cube roots and the cubes, or the cube root cancels the perfect cube, right? Just becomes two. And then two times two is four. So our answer would be four cube root five. Joe? So I got the same answer, but um, Good. when you did the, the square root of the two to the third times two to the third. Times you mean five, the, the cube root? Cube root, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so I multiplied two to the third times two to the third to get 16, and then I saw 16 to the perfect square, so I just broke up into four. So I kind of had one less step. So, so perfect one. cubes is what you should be looking for. So that's probably why. I and well. two to the third times two to the third is not, it's not 16. 16, it's 64. Uh, and the reason you, it's what you did is you did cube roots, or you did square roots instead of cube roots. The square root of 16 is 2. Is it? What? Or the square root of 16 is 4. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. But okay. the cube root of 64 is also 4. That's why you ended up with the same answer. Uh, so that process would not work on other problems? No, you got lucky. Interesting. Okay. So what Joe said is, oops, could you do this if you recognize that 64 was the cube root of, or was 4 cubed, or the cube root of 64 is 4? Sure. That's okay to do that too. Okay. Okay, I see what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. So you could you could go that direction also, and that's okay. So basically just always break them up into their own little parts. I, I think it's, if you are not confident in recognizing perfect squares and perfect cubes, I think working with everything as a prime factorization and just breaking them into packets is the easiest way to do it. It's not always the shortest way to do it or the fastest way to do it, but like right. it's very, you're very, there's a low opportunity to make a mistake past like adding and counting and basic arithmetic stuff um, versus if you're just like, oh, you know, the cube root of 16 is 2. Well, no, it's not. Like, that's a problem. You know, like, you wouldn't say the cube root of 4 or 2 to the 4th is 2, which is what 16 is, is 2 to the 4th. You get what I mean? Yeah. No, so it's just like less opportunity to make like a silly mistake yeah. if you just deal with everything as powers or exponents. Um, but again, it's like it's not required. It's not the only way to do that. Oh. Let's do some more, huh? Yeah. What else do you guys want to look at? There's a whole, whole second page to this too that we're more than welcome to look yeah, at too. Sixteen, please. Yeah, of course. Okay. So I'm going to start by just doing prime factorizations for these. So 12 is negative, or negative 12 is negative 1 times 2 squared times 3. And 10 is 2 times 5. And now I notice that none of those have a perfect cube under either one of them. So rather than just writing them as separate, I'm going to go straight to writing them all as one big one. Is everybody okay with that? Well, 6 isn't prime. Right? 6 becomes 2 and 3. So, again, you want to make sure you're getting down to primes. If you're going to go that route, you can't just, like, do one divide and be like, oh, there we go, unless you get, like, a perfect square or perfect cube, depending on the problem. Okay. Does that make sense, Hallie? Yeah. Okay. So now if I regroup things together, I notice that I have a 2 squared and a 2 to the first. That can make three total 2s, right? Everybody's OK there? Still OK? OK. So I'm going to break up. this now. The cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1. 
the cube root of 2 to the third is just 2, and I can't do anything with the cube root of 3 times 5, so I'm just going to multiply those together. And then negative 1 times 2, I'm just going to multiply together. And there's my final answer. Once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. And I gave you more work than you needed when we did the examples in class because I really wanted, when I started shortcutting through things, you to actually understand what I'm doing when I'm doing the shortcuts. So like we did a lot of writing when we did these example problems in class. And I, I expect that you guys probably wrote a lot for this assignment. Now, as we get going in this and this becomes easier and you understand what you're doing better, we'll start eliminating steps as I've started eliminating things here and kind of just going, okay, uh, let's see, do the prime factorization. This is kind of how I want to split everything up and then boom, I'm done. You'll get good at it. But you need to, you know, you need to understand what's going on kind of first before we start making it short. Callie? 20? Sure. Okay. So I'm going to start with some prime factorizations. So 343 is 7 to the third. Negative 729 is going to be negative 1 times 729, but 729 is 9 to the third. And 125 is 5 to the third. So I don't really need to do anything more than this to kind of see what's going to happen. I'm just going to have 7 times negative 1 times 9 times 5. Or negative 315. Now I know 9 wasn't prime, but I recognize 729 is a perfect cube. If you did a prime factorization, you would have gotten 3 to the 6th which would be two packets of three, which would give you three times three, which is still nine. And it's certainly okay to do that. Allie? Uh-huh. Yeah, are there questions on 20 before I move on? That was pretty quick. I'm okay to do that. I just wanted to give you opportunities if you wanted to ask about something. Mr. Kulik? Yes. Um, you're still not sharing your screen. Oh, my goodness. I wish you would have spoken up earlier. I sent a chat, but I don't know. Oh, I well, because I wasn't sharing the screen, I didn't see it pop up. <laughs> That's okay. If you ever, if I ever do that, feel free to just chime in and interrupt me. It's like not a big deal at all if you unmute yourself because I'm doing something dumb. I see there are three chats now. So, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Okay. Um, Joe, you were in the middle of trying to say something else. What's up? Oh, yeah. So you did cube root the 7 and the 1 and the 9 and the 5 at the bottom because of... Well, I did. The cube root of 7 cubed is 7. Right. Okay. And then the cube root's gone. So it's just... Is it, okay. Because I, what I really did was I took the cube root of 343, and that is equal to 7. Yeah. Okay, okay. I see Right, so this is equal to this is equal to negative one times nine, and that one's equal to five. Yeah. And every time we have a negative cube root, we have to put a negative one, right? Well, it's what, like what, what we established on um, Thursday was that if you take the odd root of a negative, yeah. it's always going to give you a negative number. Okay. So, like the, any odd root of negative one is just negative one. Yeah. I understand. So basically is what my answer to your question is like there's a little bit more to it to that than what you said but basically it's yeah okay all right uh 18 was the other was the next one we want to look at um, yeah okay. 
So again, I'm going to start with prime factorization. So 20 is 2 squared times 5. Negative 50 is negative 1 times 50. And then 50 is 2 times 5 squared. And again, none of those had a perfect cube in it, so I'm just going to take it and squish it all under one radical. And then I'm going to look for things to combine together. So I have two twos and another two. That's going to give me three twos. Then I have one five, and then two more fives gives me three fives. And then I can just write this as the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of 2 cubed times the cube root of 5 cubed or negative 10. Uh, Alexis? Sure. Are we good on 18 before I move forward? Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Yes, Woody? Yeah, the cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1. So that's why I'm getting the negative 10 instead of regular 10. Is that... Okay. All right. Um, Alexis, you want to look at 17, you said? Yeah. All right. I'm going to change colors here because we got a lot of work going on here, and it's starting to get kind of confusing looking. I'm seeing. I wonder, can I do this? No. Great. I don't know how to do that. Um, No, I guess not. Well, that's dumb. All right, anyways. I thought maybe if I highlighted it, it would I could change the color of it, but apparently not. Okay. 16, I'm going to start with prime factorizations, is 2 to the 4th. 54 is 2 times 3 to the 3rd. So each of these I can separate out a little bit. So I'm going to leave them as separate cube roots for the moment. 2 to the 4th, I'm really going to think of as 2 to the 3rd times 2. And again, I wanted to do that because I'm looking for packets of 3, because it's a cube root. So when I take that, um, the cube root of 2 to the 3rd, and then I have a cube root of 2, and I have another cube root of 2, and then I have a cube root 3 to the third. So the cube root of 2 to the third is just 2. The cube root of 3 to the third is just 3. So that's going to give me a 6. And then I just have these two left over that I can't do anything with. So I'm just going to combine them back together. So the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2. I'm, I'm sorry. You, well, no, because it's a cube root of 4. So I need four. I need three 2s to simplify that anymore, and I only have 2. So that's as good as I can do. If it was a square root, yes, we could do more. But it's a cube root. Yeah, no problem. Nineteen. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna do it over here. So again, I'm gonna start with prime factorizations. Twenty-four is two to the third times three. Forty-five is uh, three to the second times five. And then 175 is 
um, seven times, oops, let's do it in order, five squared times seven. God, Kulik, get your stuff together. There you go. Okay. And I'm just going to squish all the perfect cube in the first one, but there's no more twos anywhere, so it doesn't really... I think it's just going to be easier to do it this way. So negative 1 times negative 1 is just... And if I look, let's see. And I have 1, 5, and 2 more 5s. That's going to give me 3 5s. And then I still have that 7 hanging out at the end. So then if I break this up, I have these three perfect. All right, let's continue with some new stuff then. So last time, so today, we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at dividing like radicals. And then we're going to talk then about adding and subtracting radicals. I shouldn't even say that. Just add and subtract radicals. And just like we did last time, I'm just going to do this through examples. Okay? So we'll just kind of run through some numeric examples and just kind of get you the feel for what we have to worry about. Start with division prime. Um, so let's say we have the square root of 18 over the square root of 8. Okay. So just like before, if they are the same kind of radical, in this case they're both square roots, multiplication I can take, mul I can take things and put it all under the same radical, same idea for division. Right, I can do the division all under one big radical. Now, 18 divided by 8, that's a fraction that reduces, right? What does that fraction reduce to? Nine over four, right? Everybody's okay with that? Now, I notice that's really good because both nine and four are perfect squares. So I'll go ahead and separate that into two separate radicals to get 3 over 2. Everybody okay there? Um, oh, excuse me. Just do that. Okay. Oh, I don't want to do that. Hold on one second, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to change this one more time. Oh. Let's do that. Okay. 
Now I'm ready to go. You just do that all in your head. Figure out, like, make sure that's a good example. Yeah. Like, you have something else that's just really smart guy. Uh, it's, I've been doing it for, you know, I've been doing math since I was whatever. I have a lot of practice. Mr. Cool, I heard that you're, you're actually like a genius. That you're too smart to be a math teacher. That's why he's the main comes. <laughs> the Marine comes. Yeah, he's the comes to the Marines. Hi, Megan. Don't you have like a Thank you for your service. Or like. Uh, my memory's like very good. You notice that like I do all this stuff with no notes or anything written out in advance. Yeah, what is it? Do you remember? What is your IQ score? Your IQ score has got to be over like two thousand. Well, it doesn't go up that high. <laughs> but it's probably, it's probably above. What's, what's uh? Is it like above one sixty? Really good. Yes. You're probably in the one sixty range. I can see that. Yeah, I don't know. They get IQ I. Did like a crappy one on Windows, like a computer one when I was like 14. It was the only time I've ever taken one. I got like 145 or something. That's still yeah. good. When you were 14, too? Yeah. Cool I was in right? middle school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you joking? What college did you go to? Dude, I can't even get past 60. LBN? Is that a good college? Pretty good. My friend plays baseball there. Hey, all I know is Mr. Cool, if you got you got something going for you in the math department. Thanks. Who is the head of the math department? It's Garcia. Yeah, but yeah. Mr. Cool is by far is the smartest one. I, I can't yeah. really tell. Yeah. I think that's so but that's not even we, we, we gotta vote Miss Garcia. Yeah, we need you. So she's too busy taking my sweatshirt, she's not paying attention to the math. If we look at this, can we reduce twenty-eight over seventy-five? There's a chance. We'll see. Okay. Do you, can you tell off by looking at it immediately whether that can happen or not? Okay. So Ben says you can't. Some of us say, well, I can't tell right away. If you can't tell, let's do the prime factorization and we'll know for sure, right? Love to see it. 28 is 2 squared times 7. 75 is 3 times 5 squared. So there's nothing in common, right, between the numerator and denominator. So there's no reducing to do. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to leave it as two separate radicals because one radical isn't going to get me anywhere. You know what I mean? So if I have the numerator, I'm going to just have 2 square root 7. And I reduce the denominator, I'm going to have 5 square root 3. Everybody okay there? So this is reduced. The problem is that as mathematicians, we're not going to leave our final answers looking like this. Thanks, Zach. So the convention is we're not going to leave any radicals in the denominator of our fraction. As mathematicians, we're going to agree on this, that when we write a final answer, we don't want to have a radical in the denominator. What we have right here is a radical in the denominator. Everybody okay with that? We don't care what's going on in the numerator, but the denominator we don't want to have to leave a radical there. This would have come up in your geometry class last year also. Do you guys remember from your geometry class last year how you solved this problem? Is it like reverse square root or something like that? Well, how many threes would we need in that radical for it to cancel out? Just one. One more, right? Yeah, one more. One more. We need it th to be three squared. Yeah. Everybody agree with that? So what we'll do then is I'll just top and bottom by square root 3. It's okay to do that because what are we really multiplying by? Well, 1, right? Square root 3 over square root 3 is just 1. 
And it's okay to multiply something by one. That doesn't change anything. It's just going to look different. Well, nine is a perfect square. And nine is a perfect square. More radical in our denominator. Just a question. Sure. Um, so when you went from the uh, square root of three times five squared, I think, and then you got five times the square root of three, can you just go over how you got to why, why is five times the square root of three? Mm -hmm. It sounded like uh, Yep. So this is just square root 3 times square root 5 squared. Yep. And the square root of 5 squared is the 5, and the square root of anything else with. Oh, I see. Sounds good. Thank you. Is that okay? Yep, yep. Makes sense. No problem. All right. Let's do another. Oh, excuse me. This is four counts, counts your daughter, right? Yeah, she's a, it's a daughter. Yeah, Not sleeping well. Yeah. She a youngin? She's like a year and a half. Is her name Uh no, it's she's not named after you. Her name is her name is Sloan. Oh, that's cute. What? Oh, Sloan. That's like no. I've never watched an episode of Grey's Anatomy. Sloan. Sloan. That's a fancy name. Who came up with it? You or uh, Mrs. Kulik? Uh, we were brainstorming names, and this is one that Mrs. Kulik suggested and I latched on to. And basically made it happen. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. Uh, let's do. Let's try this one. Yep. Sure. So again, first thing you'd want to do is see if you can reduce. And maybe you can see that this reduces and maybe you can't. The for sure way to know whether you can reduce or not is to look at the prime factorization, which we're probably going to need to do anyways to do the to simplify the roots. So it's no big deal. 81 is 3 to the 4th. And 24 is 2 to the 3rd times 3. And now I see there's reducing because I have 3's in the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to think about this instead as one big radical instead of two separates. So far so good, everybody? Good. Megan? I draw the factor tree. You know, like 81 is, you could say, is 9 and 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 threes. And you can do the same thing with 24. Does that feel okay, Meg? So I'm just skipping drawing the factor trees because... It's honestly just exhausting to me. It's like I didn't do it. I'm just going to do it in my head. And I don't expect you guys to be able to do it in your head. You know, draw the factor tree. I think will help. Or do it on your calculator and just keep track of it. It's fine. Okay. 
So let's reduce this fraction. I have one three in the denominator and four threes in the numerator. So that can reduce, right? One of the threes from the numerator can reduce with the one three in the denominator, leaving me three threes in the numerator and no threes left in the denominator. Everybody happy there? All the reducing is finished. And I notice that I have perfect cubes in both my numerator and denominator. So I'll just separate into two radicals and bada boom, bada bing, we're done. Well, I'm reducing. Yeah. Right? Like if I have 6 over um, 12, I basically have 2 times 3 over 2 squared times 3. So the twos or the threes cancel, and one of the twos cancel, and so I'm left with one over two. So you did like three to the third times three. Sure, if that helps to think about it that way, yeah. Okay. Basically, I just thought of the three to the fourth as four threes. Yeah, yeah. And I canceled one of them with the one three in the denominator, yeah. leaving me three left. Yeah, that's okay. Again, if I'm shortcutting through some steps and you're not quite sure, say something, we can talk about it some more. That's okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. Let's try this one. Cube root of 40 over cube root of 375. Again, first thing you'd want to do is to check to see if you can reduce this. And probably most of us can look at this and go and know it's going to reduce a little. Since the numerator ends in 0 and the denominator ends in a 5, you know that there's going to be a factor 5 in there. But let's, uh, let's look at the prime factorization to see if that's all there is. So 40 is 2 to the 3rd times 5. And 375 is 3 times 5. 5 to the third. So the only thing in common is a factor of 5. But look closely. Do you really want to reduce that 5? No. No. Why not? Well, notice that in the denominator, we have a packet of 3 already. If we reduce it, we're going to lose that packet of 3. And then we don't want to have a radical in the denominator, so it's just like more work for us to do later to do this reducing now. So I'm not going to reduce here. Basically because it's going to cause me to lose that perfect cube. So I'm just going to think about these as two separate pieces. Everybody okay there? Nope, though, this is not the way we're going to leave our final answer because we have a radical still in the denominator. So we need to get rid of that. That process is called rationalizing the denominator. I guess I didn't mention that earlier. But how many threes do I need in the denominator to get rid of the cube root there? I need three total, right? So I need two more. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by three squared, or cube root. Yes, Megan? Well, the uh, radical is a cube root, right, in this problem? 
So a cube root needs three things to cancel it. So I need three to the third. I need three times three times three to cancel the cube root. Is that okay? I only have one three currently in my denominator, so I needed two more. Because I know like this is true, right? So I have only one three currently, I needed two more to get to three to the third. So this is going to leave me with 2 cube root 45 when I just clean things up there at the end. Ooh. Okay, let's talk a little bit about addition and subtraction now. So for addition and subtraction, things work a little bit differently. So you can only add or subtract radicals if they are identical. So for example, if I have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3, those radicals are not identical, right? One is a root square root 2 and the other is a square root 3. There's nothing to do in that case. If I have the square root of 2 plus the cube root of 2, are those radicals identical? No. One is a square root, the other is a cube root. So again, nothing that we can do there. Now if I have a square root of 2 plus a square root of 2, that we can do. And the way we do this is we add the coefficients. So remember there's always a coefficient of 1 that's there that we don't usually write down. So 1 square root of 2 plus another square root of 2 gives me 2 square roots of 2. Everybody's okay with that? Subtraction is going to work the exact same way. So if I have 5 square roots of 7 minus 2 square roots of 7, what do we get? 3 square roots of 7. Very good. It's okay. Notice that this works very much like just adding and subtracting variable expressions, right? 5x minus 2x is 3x, where we're just treating the radical part like an x. How about this one? What do I get here? So you can. I think you can, right? Well, 
Yeah, so here's the here's the catch. At first glance, you a lot of people said no because you said square root 2 and square root 8 are not the same radical, which is true. However, 8 is not reduced. Notice that before we had 2s and 3s, which were both prime. 8 isn't a prime. Maybe if we reduce the square root of 8, we'll be, end up with the square root of 2 actually at the end. So we have to check that before we can say, no, we can't do that. So I recognize 8 as the square root of, or I'm sorry, 8 4 times 2. So the square root of 8 can just be the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is just 2, right? And now, this is something we can do, right? What do we get? 5 Yeah, 5 square root 2. What's the square root of 4 equal to? Just 2. Cool? Yeah. And that's kind of as tricky as they get, right? Let's do one more just to make sure. We'll throw some subtraction in there. E, F. So let's say we have negative 2 square root 12 minus square root 75 plus 2 square root 48. Right now, can I add and subtract these? No. No way, Jose. Is it possible that I can add and subtract them, though? Yes. Yeah. What would I want to do to check that? That's what I would do. So 12 is 2 squared times 3. 75 is 3 times, 48 is um, 2 to the 4th times 3. So if I look at the first radical, the 2 squared can get reduced. If I look at the second radical, the 5 can get reduced. And if I look at the third radical, 2 squared and another 2 squared. Everybody agree with that? So I already have 2 times 2 times 2, square root 3. Is that okay? So one, two's there, one, two's that one, and one, two is that one, right? Okay, so that's a negative four square root three minus five square root three plus eight square root threes gives me negative one square root three. So bad. I think this, again, it's yeah. really just, it's no worse than reducing, right? The reducing part is the only hard part. Once it's reduced, you're just basically combining like terms. Yeah, it's just the reducing part's the kind of the tricky piece there. But it's not anything new, right? We do the reducing when we multiply and divide and when we reduced already, so we should be getting comfortable with that skill. All right, well, I'm going to stop here because I think that's good enough for today. Um, 
homework two I want to point out to you is on PowerSchool, or I'm sorry, on uh, net, or the content library already. It is three pages, just to keep a heads up. So we have just some reducing problems like you guys did last time in the homework. We have just some multiplication problems like you did last time in the homework. Then we have some division problems like we practiced today. And we have some addition and subtraction problems like we practiced today. Okay? So again, there are three pages to this assignment. And there's a little bit of everything that we've done so far. Again, I intentionally went back and put in some of these skills that we did last time. Because as we went through them today, you saw like I started to shortcut a lot of stuff. So I wanted to give you an opportunity again to do those problems where you shortcutted through some of that work. Um, so we have, I don't know, 20 or 15 or 20 minutes left here in class. I would love it if you guys got your stuff out and got started on these. I think that's really important that you guys take some time here at the end of class when we give it to you and start on the homework. It'll stick a heck of a lot better if you do a little bit of practice on your own right now. If you get stuck on something, feel free to come up and talk to me. I'm happy to give you some feedback and look at your work and let you know if you're doing things right or wrong. And uh, yeah, don't feel like you need to, while you're doing stuff in class, do things in order. If you want to jump around and try some of the hard looking stuff before you go, if you feel pretty good about things, totally fine to do that, right?